My thanks to Kairos and her minions. Spoilers within. You've been warned, Chronicler. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to our Let's Play of Tyranny. Let's continue roughly where we left off. I've exited uh, the tent that the Archons were dis discussing the matters in when I gave them the edict. And now I've gone around, I've come back around to Iron Marshall. Um, and I've asked her, you know, what can we do? You mentioned that you might need some help. And she's saying that I have brigades amassing along the Placid Echo Call and Little Tooth Crossings. The Vendorian Guard may be able to hold one bridge, but they cannot hold against a concerted three-prong attack. I have, no, I have no right to give you orders, but we all die to Karos' edict should we fail. So I'm not about to let my pride blind me to the value of good help. Alright, I can help. Antio will be leading the charge at Echo's Crossing. Assisting will be Barrack of the Stone Shields. She points to heavily armored soldiers, sentries standing at the edge of the training field. Before before you ask, no, no, the forge bound. Were not sloshed or dapple seed when they fitted with armor. He survived the full force of the Edict of Storms, and his armor doesn't exactly come off. Forgebound or Mage Smith sworn to Kairos' service. Okay. Soldier steps up. Steps up to you better resembles an amalgamation of rusted blades and mismatched pieces of armor fused into a vaguely human shape. It reeks of sweat, feces, and whatever oil treatment keeps him flexible. Okay. So it's forged onto him. Interesting. Fatebinder, the Iron Marshal has tasked me with keeping you alive, and I have no intention of disappointing her. That should be enough assurance for anyone. Eric, is that you under there? I had no idea you were in Vendrian's well. Fatebinder, do you know this walking anchor? Just a minute, you two know each other? No. Oh, that is to say, yes. I'm already as familiar with this ironclad halfwit as I care to be. We don't have time to trade jabs today, Verse. After the siege, you can throw as many tantrums as you please. I suggest that we remain focused on the mission. No offense to the mission, but seeing you looking like a garbage heap and reeking of a mass grave is more amusing by far. Did you forget how to don your armor, or did Grave and Ash leave you out in the rain? <laughs> uh. I encountered Beric in the Stalwart campaign. He appears much changed. He's an excellent soldier. You're generous to say so. I'm afraid I left the better part of myself on the killing fields of Stalwart, but it's still in my pride and honor to serve the Legion. The Fate Banner will be joining us for the push across the river. I figured an extra hand might help, and more importantly, if it comes to true, the Chorus tries to impede the mission, we'll have an observer from the court on our side. Better to work with the Honorable Binder than some Chorus children. I ask Beric to accompany you there to uh, arbitrate the cooperation between his company and the Scarlet Chorus. Echo Call Crossing's now unlocked on the world map. Okay, nice. Beric, you've been without a cohort since the last Battle of Stalwart. It's time we gave you a task more worthy than hauling wagons and leading training drills. Ash is assigned to you to the Fate Binder's service. You're to assume this task is ongoing until we find a more permanent spot for you. Which could very well mean swiftly approaching the end of this war. Or when the Fatebinder dismisses you. Is that understood? That's an order, Beric. He can be st stubborn as pulling a spire out of the earth, but he's a good soldier. Hope you don't mind his company. Let's see, I do mind, but I'll allow it anyway. 
If so, I can put a large object between myself and the enemy. Well, that's fine. I'm honored to have him. Matter of fact, how is that looking? Let's take a look here. Oh, not missions. You know what? Did I ever pick her second talent? I don't think I did, actually. No, I didn't. Okay, so we've got Duelist. You can get Killing Spree, Flurry's Rush. Mocking Iron. Killing Spree. After a kill, Burst will strike twice. Their attacks for a short time. Or Fury's Rush. Burst moves quickly about the battlefield, too quickly for enemies to engage her. That sounds useful. You've already got Skewer. How come I can't choose this then? One point in the Duelist Tree. She has one point in the Duelist Tree. I can change his. How come I can't change hers? Has it already been assigned? Oh, uh, maybe. She was already level 2. But I get to choose his. Okay. So he's got Punisher, Striking Iron, Striking it in a single enemy, dealing significantly increased damage if the target is engaging Barrack. Issue a mocking invitation, challenging enemies to attack. Oh, yeah, there we go. And get him more health? Yeah. There we go. So now let's take a look. Speak with Fifth Eye at the, at the Scarlet Chorus camp. Yep, we'll do that. And we've got the Battle of Echo Call Crossing. So we can do this as well. Now let's take a look at our time. We've got eight days across this Day of Swords. And remember, this affects everyone. So, you know, we we can die too. Not like we get spared from it. How do you do that? Do what? Back to the Archon's war tent, you cast an edict as casually as reading a supply shipment. Uh, yeah, I've done it before. You were the one who cast the Edict of Storms on Star Wars, didn't you? One that tore the battlefield apart with the Cyclone of Kairos' anger. Well, call me impressed, considering that you read the words of Kairos more than once. I'm surprised that you're even alive to tell of it. Your vocal cords should have turned to ash by now. I'm not trying to make you feel uncomfortable, it's just worth recognizing what you've done. Not only are you Tunon's Fate Binder, you're the mouthpiece of the Overlord. This me plenty of reason to stick around. You're going places. I want to see where they lead. Okay, now let's talk to Barrack real quick. You look as if you have something on your mind. By all means. What can I do for you? What do you know of the Beastmen? They drilled us on the Beastmen combat before the invasion, but it did little to prepare us. Local savages are lacking in brains, hygiene, and the ability to arm themselves. Yet the prime hunters of the species are formidable. What are your assessment of the local forces? It was a time early in the war when I feared the younger realms working together. Imagine that. <laughs> Can you tell me of the Bronze Brotherhood? Mercenaries from the Free Cities. Chorus needed extra muscle, so you can always mint, a, mint new rings. Hard to believe that Tearsmen turn on each other for mere loops of metal. I believe it. Go on, Fatebinder. Alright, let's go. Let's talk to this guy again. What do you got for me here, dude?
Immunity to frightened and terrified? Wow, that's nice. Like, really nice. Camping supplies? Uh, yeah, we could pick up four more. Let's see, what do we have to trade here? Anything we want to get rid of? Now that we got a guy that can wear heavy armor, I don't want to trade that away. Oh, we got a couple things we could sell. Trade that away. As a matter of fact, let's take a look here. Let's look at his equipment at barracks. Oh, right, it's fused onto him, so we can't change that. What about... His weapon? We can change his weapons, though, right? And shield? Offhand only quality. These look pretty much the same. What he's got is better. All right, and what about his weapon? Nah, we'll just leave it be for now. That's fine. Is it... No, not shift-click. Control? No. Maybe... Alt? There we go. Alt-left-click allows you to split them up. So, I want him to have some. And I want her to have some as well. And I'll take the remainder. Okay, so we can head to Echo's Call, or Echo's Crossing. Scar Chorus Camp is on the way, though, so that makes more sense. Alright, let's head down there. Path is blocked by a small group of Vendrian Guard. You can go no further until you deal with them. Oh, okay. That's far enough, Fatebinder. Aqua Marine, Aqua Marine body paint. According to the Fatebinder, Regos, you're ready to the school fled before coming to Kairos. School of Tides traditionally studies magic of water. Okay. Flanked on either side by warriors dressed in Vendoran Guard regalia. Woman leans on an elaborate bladed staff pulsing with arcane energy in a swath. Of blue fabric rests draped over her arm. Blue flag is a symbol of diplomacy, a truce recognized across most of the known world. It's a custom of the tearsmen to hold dear. Armor of the person on the auspice of auspices of the blue flag is a grave offense in both the tears and in Kraus's empire. The customary punishment is death. In accordance with ancient customs north and south. I offer and request a delay of blade. There are matters we must discuss without fear of reprisal. In accordance with the ancient customs north and south, I abide by this truce. As is our custom, we are ready to kill to defend our lands. But we kill only in fair battle. We don't slay our prisoners. We know this isn't Kairos' way, but we must have hope. A few of my kin have gone missing, and though they may have perished, I have to inquire on the off chance they still live. If Captain Tarkas Deimos still lives, we would negotiate for his release. One of the leaders attack the Edring Ruins, Tarkas Deimos, was subdued during the battle. In accordance with the disfavored, you ordered... Oh, right. Yeah, we executed him. Um... Yeah, no, he's fine. He's good. <laughs> No, no, he's, yeah, he's alive and well. What can I, what can I say? Uh, hmm. I mean, we can lie. Assuming he's our prisoner, what would you offer in exchange? Oh. Assuming he's our prisoner, what would you offer in exchange? Hmm, that would be interesting. 
Did we lie and say that, or we just, or we just say he's dead? Let's say he's dead. I want to find out if she's gonna say, "Well, who killed him?" And then I can tell him us, and then we could fight. Yeah, that's kind of my hope. I see. That is as I feared, but thank you for telling me all the same. I prefer closure to wishful thinking. Is this like somebody that's gonna join our if party? If I may make one more inquiry, what if Palox Tyrell did he survive? Oh yeah, no, he's he's dead. Yeah, he's seriously dead. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they the bunch of them jumped that guy. Remember that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Pilux Turtle is dead. Uh, another dead Oathbreaker. Whomever will you ask about, I assure you, nothing can be done. My apologies, Fatebinder. I had a terrible feeling this errand was in vain from the start. I had no expectations that our friends could be saved, as I'm sure the time for swapping prisoners is long gone. But at least I know of what became of them. That'll have to be enough. We shouldn't be socializing with Oathbreakers. I will entertain them as best I can. After all, understanding is the only hope we have. What is it you wish to know? Who's in charge of this insurrection? Listen to you. Thinking just like the Overlord wants you to think. There always has to be a person in charge, or things don't make sense. <laughs> well, we don't answer to anyone. We are each of us sons and daughters of the Tears, and take this task upon ourselves freely. But Captain Tarkas Ari, former Falksman of Queen Vendry and Alanta, is the voice we trust when we seek unanimity. Uh-huh. So I assume Tarkas Ari and Tarkas Demos are relations? Yes. Deimos is... was... Ari's brother. We were certain he was dead, but... The Captain takes family seriously, so I volunteered to find some answers. And now here we are. Where were the prisoner that swaps in the past? Binder. Here in the South, only thugs and bandits kill prisoners. The Younger Realms may be guilty of constant fighting, but we never slay each other when the battle's long over. We're not about to change that now. As a rule, Kairos's forces haven't been keen on swapping prisoners. But I know our disfavored prisoners aren't prisoners anymore. I just assumed they were swapped for some of our own. So why do you resist Kairos? What are you trying to save? I grew up without my knee bent to Kairos. And if I'm going to bow to someone, let it be another Tearsman. We've ruled ourselves just fine for centuries, so we'll give our lives so that our sons and daughters might rule themselves. Hmm. But a mage like you would not be a subject of suspicion and fear under Kairos' reign. I doubt life is any better sworn to some mad Archon. I'd rather stand with my fellow Tearsmen. Or, I suppose, stand immediately behind them in the event of an attack. Yeah, you heard me. Way things were years back, you'd all be calling me a water witch and conspiring to sell me out to the nearest sage. Just because I'm helping you stop Kairos doesn't mean I've forgotten the hospitality of ages past. And people wonder why the Tearsmen could never unite in time to fight back. It's refreshing to see that some things never change. You make conflict sound like a bad thing. Yes, the Younger Realms saw frequent battles, but it was never this wholesale slaughter like we've seen of late. No Tearsman ever cast an edict on the soil, or forced prisoners to kill each other, or butchered beastmen tribes. What makes you think you have a chance? No, we don't. Those who believed Kairos could be stopped all died years ago, in the first wave of fighting. It's not about the hope of victory. It's about the hope of inspiring others. It is very likely we will fall here in Vendrian's well. But perhaps others will arise elsewhere. How did Junior Friends overthrow the garrison? I would joke that the voices of Narat left the gate unlatched, but dozens of warriors lost their lives taking the Citadel. There is no secret to it. We simply attacked with speed and certainty at a time when the Archons were elsewhere in the Tears. 
The Scarlet Chorus had a rout, and what few disfavored soldiers were present made an impressive showing. But they were surrounded and overwhelmed once the Chorus fled. Hmm. <laughs> Fair enough. But now a question for you, the Edict. I can feel its magic coursing through the air. Everyone can. But those of us enlightened to the currents of magic feel it most. The wording of the Edict. What was it? Such details are for Crass as warriors only. So you will not say. I expected as much. Can it be worse than endless storms or fire pouring from the earth? Not that you'd answer that either. I've another question for you, if you will entertain it. Are we really standing here and chatting with Oathbreakers? It's hard to watch. Like cuddling a goat you're going to kill for dinner. Your question? When I was young, my parents told me the tears were special, and the Overlord's edicts and armies could never touch us. Seems I've been told a hefty sum of lies. So answer this honestly for me, please. Is it true that Tunon's fate binders can smell truth from falsehood? Hmm. No, that's not true. Thanks for that. I could see why you'd want to foster the mystique all the same. The School of Tides would always tell commoners we didn't know how to summon drinkable water. Once they find out, you can't eat in peace. And Kairos's edicts. I have heard the sages speak at length that some of the edicts elsewhere in the world have been broken. How is this? It varies based on the wording of the proclamation. If Kairos provides a clause allowing the edict to end, the clause will be satisfied. Ah, so some edicts are forever. The rest are, as long as Kairos has in mind? Needless to say, Kairos's magic is unlike anything we've seen in any Archon. And one more mildly self-indulgent question, but I simply must know. Kairos, male or female? Well, yeah, see, I don't know for a... I know that Kairos is a woman, but I don't know that... Yeah, see, like... My character, like... I I, I do? Other male doesn't. Right? <laughs> I assume in the interest of disinformation, you can neither... Con in accordance to our most ancient customs, let us depart in honorable accord. That was kind of cool. What's this? Oh, some blood moss and stuff? Okay. Where's the way out of here? Oh, over here. Okay. Okay. To the camp, please. Take another step, I'll pin your foot to the dirt. Oh, really? What do we... <laughs> okay. It proves everything! Warrior slams her fists together in a resounding clap. Like, for instance, whether you're fit to lead that flock of children. Did you not hear the news of the edict? This is a foolish distraction. We ought to be saving our fight for the enemy. What's this? What's the problem here? No problem here, Lord Binder. She tosses her blade in the air, catching it with a smile on the way down. Captain Fwid here seems to be talking bulk about this challenge. I think it's just because he used to run a ship. He's qualified to run a gang. Oh, so I'm calling him out. Because the way I see it, his warriors ought to follow me, not this new blood. Captain Fwid was my father. F will do just fine. Warrior points at the opposing gang. We have to prove our strength. We'll do so happily. 
But I'll have to have your hands and feet removed and the rest of you kept for my own use. Uh, let's see now. This is foolish. Stop this at once. Excuse me? This is our way, Fate Binder. You have no right to stop us. We're not harming anyone outside the chorus. Uh, let's see. I don't know who you are. I don't need your help. I think we can handle this fine ourselves. Oh, now here we go. Got a couple of cool options here. So we can cut Quiet Sib's throat with a subterfuge. <laughs> then I'll end this quickly. Or we can beat Shivershank bloody. We'll settle this with strength. Yeah, no, no, let's let's handle it this way. Mister, I can handle it myself. Fring! Goodbye! Quickly snatch Quick Shiv's dagger as she flicks it in the air. Before she can even utter her cry of surprise, you stab her in the jugular with her own blade. She crumbles to the ground, face twisted with such a shock, and everyone else is grouped around you. Yeah. Enjoy your new position, gang boss. Oh, yeah, let's let's loot her while we're at it. What she got there? That dagger? Yeah, we'll take that. Hey, I keep telling everybody that this is not your typical role-playing game. <laughs> Guard places her hands in her belt as you approach. Past this point, it's chorus territory. You don't look like someone's conscript. Sure you're in the right place? Glare. Walking hunk of rust. What is, what is he, she maybe doing here? Step in close and push her down? Yeah, that's fine. Or she can draw her blade, you advance, place your foot behind hers, and give her a stiff shove on the shoulder. Caught off balance, she tumbles backward, triggering an outburst of laughter from the other guard. I can't believe you sassed a fate binder! You're such a stupid ponce. Didn't I tell you we had a special guest coming? Guard waves 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 you in with a smile. Come on in. Don't let this don't let this ninny in the camp give you any gruff. Oh, there's Fifth Eye. We need to talk to Fifth Eye here in a moment. What do we got over here? Scroll. Nice. Let's read that. Learn a new spell core. Sigil of Illusion. Nice. And an expression. Let's do focused intent. Spectral Blur. Plus 30% graze deflection for 45 seconds. Oh, a defensive spell. Making them harder to hit. Wow, very cool. All right, well, when we come back on the next one, we'll uh, we'll talk to Fifth Eye, and then we'll hopefully get an opportunity to go after some of these objectives. So, got quite a few. Let's see here. We've got... The battle, right? The battle of Echo Call Crossing we can still do. And taking the Outer Valley, we'll speak to Fifth Eye, who we're standing in front of. Then Avendry as well, we still have... Oh, explore Echo Call Crossing for clues of the missing iron shipment. So these go hand in hand. Okay, cool. Well, we'll get into that in the next one. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, consider hitting the thumbs up. Thanks so much for watching. Till next time, I'm Mal, and I'll see you later.